Euzubillahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrefil mursalin. Seyyidina ve habibina ve azimina ve senedina ve mevlana Muhammedin sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ta'ala ve berekatuhu. A letter of a kind word to those who reject Sufism by the Shaykh Ahmed bin Mustafa al-Alwi rahimahullah and of course after last week's discussion um, we did mention that we are going to speak about the views of the four Imams uh, of the Madhab on Tasawwuf and it's a response also from the Shaykh al-Alwi to the uh, author of the Mara, uh, Sheikh Uthman Makki, and um, the Sheikh tells him that after having judged, after him having judged the assemblies of Dikr, that they are um, uh, they are misguided and they, they, uh, that the soul is ignorance and all of this. He said, he says to this person, and then you said it is not permissible. For anyone believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the last day to participate with them, meaning the Sufis, and neither should they, neither should people support them in their falsehood. So, but my God, how amazing. When did this religion come with a revelation which forbids participation with the Zakirun and merely sitting in their presence it becomes forbidden? Yet, as for the case of the one who moves his lips with the Zakirun when saying, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, we do not know what you consider Allah's judgment to be on us, on this. You probably consider him or such a person to be a heretic or the like. By Allah, you should know that I absolve myself, Islam and the Muslims, from such beliefs and the like, from your false accusations and your lying, when you said this is also the view held by Mali, Imam Malik, Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa and Ahmed bin Hanbal and others beside them. You have associated the leaders in religion with what you have perpetrated. You claimed that the Imams concurred with your opinion Allah forbid, however, in addition to some of the legal verdicts of the scholars of the four juristic schools of Madhahib that I have mentioned, let me cite to you where these important matters are found. For us to relate everything unto you is impossible because they are numerous. However, we will mention to you some of it taken from those whose rank in religion you are very much aware of, like Jalaluddin al-Suyuti, Shabrakhiti and Fayruz Abadi. With regards to the four Imams on Tasawuf, I shall indeed mention to you now what has been related from the scholars of the four juristic schools of fiqh. With regard to their respect for the Sufis. This is in addition to what we have already stipulated and absolving the Imams from what you have ascribed them to, that they reject Sufism. What is well known of the life of Imam al-Shafi'i radiallahu anhu is that he used to frequent a company and respect the Sufis. When he was asked about this, he answered and he said, I have learned from the Sufi Shaykhs, from the Sufis, what I have never heard from anyone else. And to mention some of the sayings, he said, they say, time is like a sword. Time is like a sword. If you don't cut it, it will cut you. And in another saying of theirs, quoted by Imam Ash-Shafi, saying, Occupy yourself with good. For if you do not do so, then you will be occupied with the opposite. Meaning your nafs will occupy yourself with the opposite. 
and he used to accompany Shaiban al Ra'i, um, a distinguished Sufi. And one day, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal was with Imam Shafi when Imam Ahmad asked Shaiban al Ra'i, May Allah be pleased with them all, inshallah, about a man who has forgotten one of the five daily prayers and did not exactly know which one of it which one it was that he had forgotten and shaiban answered saying this man has been unmindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he deserves to be disciplined then he asked him about zakah meaning imam ahmed asked this shaykh about zakah so he answered him with a very detailed answer and from that time onward Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal greatly respected the Sufis. Whenever a sensitive and delicate issue occurred, he would send for Abu Hamza al-Baghdadi, also a Sufi, and ask, what do you say about this, O Sufi? And Abu Hamza would answer with his spiritual intuition. And Shaykh Qutbuddin bin Ayman also mentioned that Imam Ahmad used to encourage his son to participate in Sufi assemblies. He would say that they have reached degrees in sincerity which we have not reached. This is quoted by the author of An Nusra. As for the well known saying of Imam Malik, Man tasawwafa wa lam yatafaqqa. فَقَدْ تَزَنْدَكَ وَمَنْ تَفَقَّهَ وَلَمْ يَتَسَوَّ فَقَدْ تَفَسَّقَ وَمَنْ جَمَعَ بَيْنَهُمَا فَقَدْ تَحَقَّقَ Whoever practices Sufism tasawwuf without Islamic jurisprudence, meaning without Sharia, is a heretic. And whoever practices Islamic jurisprudence without tasawwuf has deviated. But he who has combined the two has attained to the reality that is of the ultimate truth of the Hakika. It is also related that Abu Hanifa Nu'man, may Allah be pleased with him, was asked about the Sufis and what they do during the Hadra and what they practice therein and whether they are truthful or whether they are liars. And then he answered, Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has men who will enter paradise with their tambourines and their pipes. Then the transmitter said, There was a certain group in our town who used to sway during the dhikr until they would fall to the ground. The Imam never disapproved of it. And they used to visit him and he respected and honored them they would ask him questions and he would answer them and among the questions that was asked by one of the sufis was what do you say o cd um o imam may allah be pleased with you about the matter where some of the community of muhammad some muslims uh, have entered a church and gathered in a circle of liquor alternating and reminding each other about shaitan from the morning to the evening give us the legal opinion about them are they considered to be unbelievers or not and imam abu hanifa radiallahu anhu answered saying no one among the people of allah is considered a disbeliever through a sin and this is not a sin this has been transmitted in tuhfatul futuhat wal adwaq and in this answer the imam guards as we have seen against speaking about the religion of allah by one's opinion or that he should accuse the people of the qibla with unbelief with kufr and the like may allah grant them the best reward and he said we are referring here to all the imams the four great imams what a vast knowledge and great understanding they had and the shaykh al alwi then of course now returns to the ruling on the dancing even though it has no bearing on the teachings of the soul because this 
this is not the concept, this is not the purpose. He says to the author of the mirror, so all that which caused you to reach a prohibition which Allah Most High has made lawful is either as a result of your lack of studying the principles of religion or your lack of piety. You never knew that the dancing which is considered unlawful is that which is confined to entertainment and pleasure by way of dancing from side to side. This is characteristic of the sufaha, the foolish minded. Prohibition of this and its like does not need proof as inherent instinct has dis disapproved it by necessity because its motive is self-centered frivolity and satanic desires. But behold, if you take this ruling and start to apply it on everyone you have seen or heard dancing or who has confessed to dancing, then the result of your judgment will be based on what your eyes have seen. Do you not see that what is with you confirms that the one who makes dancing lawful is considered to be a disbeliever? That is in your eyes. So what would you say if it came to you that a group of Ethiopians of uh, the Ethiopians of ha from Habasha entered the Prophet Alayhi Masjid on the day of Eid in their well-known state of dancing and its like. And the Prophet Sallallahu watched them whilst Aisha radiallahu anha looked closely at them from behind until they were finished with their actions and he did not reproach them. By Allah, what do you understand by all this when you say dancing is absolutely prohibited? Or do you see the Prophet to some condoning what is unlawful? Or do you not see a difference between the dancing of the foolish people and the dancing of Habasha? If this report did not reach you, or indeed, if it did reach you and you were unable to discover in it a judgment of permissibility due to your lack of perception, then what do you say about the dancing of Sayyidina Ja'far ibn Abi Talib? that is the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, in accordance to what is found in some narration that when the Prophet ﷺ said to him, the Prophet said to his cousin, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, Ashbahta khalki wa khuluki. You resemble me in my appearance and in my qualities. And as a result, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq stood up and began to dance in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet did not disapprove of it. Does this not convey to you that this is permissible in its ruling? So is it correct then to apply the dancing of Sayyidina Ja'far to the dancing referred to in the Qasida of Ibn Wahban? Do you know? Do you not know that specification imposes restrictions on that which is general? So, do you think that the Sufis say dancing is absolutely lawful, as you have said that it is absolutely un unlawful? Indeed, not, for they are certainly more open-minded in their vision than yourself. They do not talk about Allah's religion without knowledge. And nor do they obtain text without understanding it. It is the ignorant who thinks that the one who has gathered some evidence and shamelessly attaches to it a share is regarded as an expert or an ali. So, do you not know that the one who makes the lawful unlawful is the same as the one who makes the unlawful lawful? as in the narration of the Prophet And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed exposed you for what you have gathered. Enough is it for you an abomination that you are unable to distinguish between the lawful and the unlawful. Do you think that knowledge 
is merely an expression of who carries it. Kalhimari yahminu asfara, as Allah says in the Quran, like that of a donkey which carries a load of books but cannot benefit from them. No, knowledge is but only an interpretation of light, of nur, taking place in the senses, which enables one to see the comprehensive just as he is able to see the tangible with his eyes. So knowledge is a means of perception, not just an accumulation of papers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most high, says to his prophet, alayhi salatu salam, in the Quran, مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانُ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا You knew not before what was revelation, nor what was faith, but we made it a light, guiding with it such of our servants whom we will. So it is for this reason that it is incumbent upon the expert, meaning the alim, not to pass any judgment on dancing before knowing the reason in order not to make unlawful that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made lawful. It is for this reason that Shaykh Mustafa bin Ismail Habash said, even though the external ruling of the Wahhabis is that dancing is unlawful, mutlaqan, meaning without restriction. However, the, re the, reali the reliable view is what Ibn Kamal Basha has mentioned. And the following text is what Safwa has conveyed, when he, wherein he says it is no sin to be in ecstasy, which is tawajud, if you are true. And there is no objection in swaying a tamayul if you are sincere. And so, what we have confirmed in, the, in this occurrence's own is not merely a victory with regard to dancing. No, it is a declaration with regard to the legal judgment. And it is a victory, of course, for the Ummah of Muhammad, وسلم, most of whom you have charged with disbelief. The majority believe in the permissibility of swaying. As for the disciples of Tasawuf, they believe that it should be a desire, it should be desired because of the Prophet saying, Laysa bi karimin man lam yahtaz inda dhikril habib. That he who does not tremble at the mentioning of the beloved, tremble in awe at the mentioning of the beloved, is not generous. Meaning he's not a true lover. And this has been transmitted by the author of An Nusra. In a similar narration, the Prophet, والسلام, peace be upon him, says, Siru faqad sabakal mufridun al muhtazuna bi dhikrillah. Travel, for indeed the devoted ones who tremble at the mentioning of Allah, they are ahead. And this is mentioned in Jami' al saghir of Imam al suyuti Do you not know that the swaying, the swaying of the Sufis in the dhikr could be the trembling as mentioned in this narration? Because swaying is very distinct in the movement of the dhakir. Due to this reason, some of the Sufis see that trembling in awe at the mentioning of Allah is as a result of their intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ But those of Iman, of faith, are overflowing in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every lover trembles naturally at the mentioning of his beloved. And I am certainly convinced that the proof which we have mentioned does not exist with you because you have never tasted this love and should it spread through your limbs you would most certainly desire to hear the mentioning of Allah the mentioning of the name of the beloved even from a disbeliever you will then say what the Sultan al-Ashikin says 
ولي ذكرها يحلو على كل صيغة وإن مزجوه عذلي بخصام Sweet for me is its mentioning in every form even if they mix it with blame and dispute Perhaps then will you know the meaning of fear and then you will see whether or not you have gained control over your soul Are you not aware of the story in the Quran about those women who cut their hands when Sayyidina Yusuf salam appeared before them and they said, Hasha lillahi ma hadha bashara. Allah preserve us. This is no mortal. This is no human being. So when this happens at the sight of the beauty of the creation, this was the makhluk. Why then should not something of the kind happen? at the contemplation of the beauty of the creator al khaliq when he appears in all the splendor of his grandeur of his greatness idha dhahara bi sultani kibriyaihi i have most certainly seen that you are not afraid in misguiding the believer or making him to be a sinner or an innovator no you are not afraid to even make him a disbeliever all this is easier for you than the drinking and the sipping of water and you have not known the sanctity of the believer in the sight of Allah and of his messenger. Do you not know that when you call a believer a disbeliever, you have indeed made permissible his life, his wealth and his abiding in the hellfire, subhanAllah. Do you think that this will please Allah Most High and His Messenger? Are you not aware that Khidr salam considered the killing of a soul easier than changing, than charging a believer with unbelief or with kufr? Allah speaks about this in the Quran when He says, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامِ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشَيْنَا as for the youth, his parents were people of faith and we feared that he would grieve them by obstinate rebellion and disbelief. So did you not know that the sanctity of the believer in the sight of Allah is greater than the sanctity of the Kaaba? Its destruction in the sight of Allah is easier than passing judgment of unbelief upon the believer who testifies to the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is of course la ilaha illallah with sincerity repeating it with all his breath but by Allah I warn you to fear Allah with regards to the people of la ilaha illallah do not speak about them with your opinion for they are people whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for his remembrance and he chose them in his foremost knowledge so you should in the least treat them well for fear of allah and respect them for the sake of allah and your attachment to them will suffice you May Allah inspire you and guide you. This is the conclusion of the discussion on dancing. Subhanallah, how clearly did we see the Shaykh Al Alwi present the evidence of the four Imams of Madhab in their support for Tasawwuf in general, exposing the lies of the author of the mirror. Who made the statement that all the four Imams disapproved of the Sawf of Sufism and the precise answer to the issue of the so-called dancing amongst the Sufis which obviously alludes to the swaying and movement in the Hadra which is a form of Dhikr and which is as a result of Ihtizaz trembling of the heart and the movement and the shaking reverberating coming out of the heart through the entire being of the dakir because for the dakir the complete dhikr 
is the vicar of the heart, of the body, and of the soul. And so, also reminds Sheikh al Alawi, he says, if the gift has failed you within yourself, then do not deny its existence within someone else. So if you cannot taste the sweetness of dhikr in all its forms, then at least acknowledge the fact that there are people who are drowned, who are annihilated in their love for the remembrance of Allah, in their remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with all of their being, that is, zahiran wa batin, outwardly and inwardly. So we, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma ahina zakirin. O oh Allah, let us live amongst the zakirun wa amitna zakirin. Let us die as zakir. Wahshurna yawm al qiyamati fi zumrati zakirin. And O oh Allah, cause us to be resurrected on the day of qiyamah with the zakirun. Wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil ahad.